Hi, it's Nikki Nellis with Foodie and the Beast and the list are you on it .com. I am sitting here in this glorious Thai basil. It's actually the garden for the Four Seasons Hotel and Bourbon Steak. But later, I'm going inside. I'm sitting down with Chef Michael Mina. We're gonna talk shop and I get to cook lobster pot pie with him. Come on in, let's go have some fun. I'm with Chef Michael Mina. So excited to be here. Now, I eat at this restaurant all the time, but one of the dishes that I've never had is the lobster pot pie. I, I don't know why I've never had it. I yeah. apologize in advance. <laughs> but it is what Michael Mina is known for. You have been making the dish since 1991. Well, you know, it's actually, it's a very fun, whimsical play on the classic pot pie. Mm -hmm. And what, um, what I love about it is it's one of those dishes that there is work that goes into it, but once the work is done, it goes in the refrigerator, it comes out, you bake it, and if you're having a party, you look like a superstar. Right, you wow and, everybody. You wow everybody, uh -huh. but yet you can still socialize and enjoy your party and, and have fun with your guests. And that's almost really how it started. Excellent. All right, well, let's get started. Okay. All right, so, so what do you need to so, make uh, Since you have pie. never eaten it, right. I'm going to teach you how to make it. Oh, I love that. So um, we're going to start with the base. And okay. The base of the lobster pot pie is the cream, and it's what it is is it's very similar to a lobster bisque. It's a mm -hmm. lobster um, brandied cream. So you start, you take all the bones of the lobster, you roast them all in a pan, deglaze mm -hmm. with brandy, um, shallots, uh, as you would making a lobster bisque, mm -hmm. and then you thicken it with a little bit of roux, traditionally like you would make lobster bisque. Right. So we're gonna we have pearl onions okay. that have been slightly roasted and um, we're going to go ahead and you can put those in the pot and put them in whole? any any way you'd like and okay. I'll take the empty dishes for okay. you okay thank you okay then you have braised baby leeks beautiful you can put those now, normally, in normally would you chop these when you put them in no or do you no put them in whole? I, I like the you know the look of the whole and also the other thing is is the cooking you want it all to cook at an even temperature okay, that so makes those sense. have been those again have been roasted halfway mm -hmm. you have um, fingerling potatoes that have been boiled okay those in. We have oyster mushrooms. Oh, uh, so we're not going to use all those. Use half of those. Half? Yeah. Do I have yeah. to use the tweezers? You don't have to use okay. the tweezers. As <laughs> long as your hands feel are clean. really professional <laughs> if I was. <laughs> and you know, this is kind of the fun part of it is uh, it's almost like once the prep has been done, you're just putting it putting all in it the all pot. Together. Okay. Um, celery, Sorry. which has been sliced and uh, quickly, just a quick saute on it. Mm -hmm. Truffles, you can, how much of that would you like to oh. put in? How about half? Okay, half. I'm not going to be greedy. I'm sure there are people I'll, out there I'll, who I'll want me the, to be greedy. I'll, I'll do the truffles. Okay. Thank you. I can't let you lose with the truffles. Thank you very much. Okay. okay. Um, then we have um, red onions. Okay. No, are these? Red pearls. So red so, pearls? Yes. And those have been boiled. Mm -hmm. um, carrots. Mm -hmm. Now are they cooked a little yes, bit? Like yes, those par? have been again. Those are, those have been blanched in uh, salted water. Okay. Chopped parsley. The whole thing. Yep. Okay, let's put the whole thing in. And now. Beautiful. Okay, and now we'll arrange our lobster. Okay, great. So we're gonna go with the tail. Mm-hmm. Down like so. Oh, so you put the shell in. Yeah, whole shell. Okay. The shell protects it, keeps so it, it from overcooking. Over yep. But this lobster is cooked. This lobster has been blanched. Okay. Um, uh, the claws have been blanched for seven minutes. Okay. Boiling water and then so the shell. So the lobster is first killed and broken up. Killed and broken up in, into okay. pieces. The body is what we use to make the cream sauce. Uh huh. And then the tail was blanched for two minutes. Mm hmm. And then chilled as well. Okay. So now we'll put the lobster cream. It looks so decadent. <laughs> so Look at how gorgeous that is. So the vegetables will, mm -hmm. um, so what I did is I just egg washed around the outside of it. And this and is, um, is it puff pastry? Pie dough. Oh, it's pie dough. Traditional pie dough. Mm -hmm. Three, two, one pie dough. And so okay. now I'll gently, this is the part where you want to be gentle. Three, two, one pie dough. Uh-huh. What does that mean? Uh, three, three parts flour, uh -huh. two parts butter, and one part water. Okay. No salt? On the top after we glaze it. All right. So we're just making it, and it's important to seal it. Do it delicately. You don't want to break through the crust because then right. you'll get a hole and it'll steam out, won't cook properly. Mm -hmm. But you also want to make sure that you get a good seal on it so that the dome stays and you create the nice 
dome. And it'll puff. And it'll steam, and that's actually what's going to cook the lobster so nice and it, even. Do you give it a little bit of a vent? No, 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 no vent at all. We okay. want to steam it and let the lobster uh, cook on, at a hot heat. How good does that look? All right. And so now we're just going to go ahead and put it in a 375 degree oven okay. for 14 to 16 minutes. Okay. This part. is this is how it would come. Okay. This is how it comes to the table. The captain will bring to the table. We have our little uh, knife, spoon, and fork that we're going to carve it with. Right. Come to the table like this. Uh huh. Put it down in front of the guest, like so. Everybody ooze and ahs. Ooze and ahs. Right. We remove the lobster mm -hmm. um, and put it beside it, mm -hmm. and then insert. Press like so, uh -huh. and again like. You could probably do this in your sleep at this point, <laughs> right? And now you can Ooh. see, you get all the smells. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. That yeah, is but... gorgeous. Look at that. Okay, and then. Now what we'll do. How hard is it for the waiters to like bat away people's yeah. experience from like trying to get in there? And so now you have, you know, the, the sauce is cooked into the lobster. Mm -hmm. And so now we'll just recreate the lobster on wow. the plate. What we've done is just recreated mm -hmm. the pot pie and put it, put the lobster tail and all of the all of the goodies, all the goodies. and it's just beautiful. Um, Thank you, you ready to taste? I am. You bet. Okay. It's one of those gorgeous forks. Oh, okay. I got one. You have one? I do. All right. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna start with a carrot. You're just gonna start with a carrot. I am gonna start healthy. <laughs> you put your fork in that claw, and I'll cut it for you. Okay. okay. <laughs> oh my God, the sauce is just fantastic. Oh. Okay. And Thank how about you. a little dough? A little bit of dough. <laughs> there you go. Because you, it wouldn't be good without the dough, right? <laughs> Oh, it's hot. It's hot. Mm. <laughs> That's another great thing about the dish. It's always hot. Mm. <laughs> that is absolutely decadent. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. So, I just finished making a lobster pot pie with Chef Michael Mina, yes. but I thought we should sit down and talk about some of his new projects that he has going on. So, Chef. Uh huh. 20 years later, yes. 18 restaurants yes. later, yes. we have Bourbon Steak here uh -huh. in D.C. Now, yes. we've talked before about how you were sort of like the man of fish. Uh -huh. You evolved to do other <laughs> things. Yeah. But what I love about Bourbon Steak is that it's not all steak. No. So since it's open, do you think that the restaurant has evolved to fit D.C. and its tastes? Or there were things that you and the chefs that you have working here, you found you wanted on the menus? Well, I, I think that whenever you come into a market, you will adapt to the market because, mm -hmm. you know, look, at the end of the day, product and clientele are what are going to drive your restaurant. Sure. And the product that you can, you will always, um, you know, learn more about the product once you're in the market. Mm -hmm. and. And you'll create relationships with the farmers and with the growers. And I think that um, myself, the chefs that are the chef who started here, David Varley, and Adam, the chef who took over for David, mm -hmm. have done a great job of growing the restaurant up. And that's the idea: is to continue to grow it, move it forward. Which I think people expect from you, given how many restaurants you have. They know when they go into a Michael Mina restaurant, they're going to get, even though the concepts are different, right. consistent. Product. Well, that's what you hope. I mean, what you uh, what you hope to accomplish when you build restaurants and when you have more than one restaurant is a team of people that can deliver a con a consistent message mm -hmm. of in a restaurant. And and we we've, we've always felt really strongly about um, having 
beautiful rooms, great design, good energy in the room. But do you sort of think of the Whisper joint? Uh -huh. Do you sort of feel that since you started 20 years ago, uh -huh. that the way people dine and the way people want to dine, that people are looking for a more buzzy, interactive, high energy restaurant as opposed to a more sedate experience? I think so. I mean, I think energy, um, it really helps the room. I mean, I think that that um, a dining experience that, you know, and, and look, I mean, there's times when you do want a very quiet dining experience, and there's great restaurants for that. And um, I think that a nice balance that Bourbon Steak has is you still have that chic and elegant feel of the room, but you there's just a, a certain... Um, informality about it that I think is um, is very comfortable for people. Well, I, I just think it's fine dining uh -huh. in a, it is it is fine dining, it is almost formal dining, but it's not stodgy dining, and I think yeah. that, that you're able to make that come across. Well, thank you. Thank well, you. we're really looking forward to Baltimore, because being here in D.C., it's just a quick 40-minute drive, yes. so we can check it out when it opens the 1st of November. 1st of November, yes. Excellent, and of course, we can always come here to Bourbon State. Thank you. Chef, thanks so much for joining me today. Th thank thanks you. Thanks for the cooking lesson. You're welcome. My Anytime. husband's going to be very happy. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>